Hi guys, so this is video four of Prince and Duke, and this is in hand. So I'd first off like to say a big thank you to everyone that supported me through my journey. To be able to share these videos with you now and give a little bit back with some tips and ideas is really nice. So please like and share my page, subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can carry on sharing. Hope you enjoy. So importance of in hand, why do we do it? Well, for me, it's about learning how the horses move, what they can and can't cope with, building a bond, breaking things down to bite sized chunks before you get on. So here I'm going to start with Duke and I'm teaching him a little bit about pressure and release. I want him to learn that to relax and to lower down is a nice thing. Um, he holds a lot of tension through his body, especially his head and neck. So I have cheated slightly and given him a little bit of grass here just so that you guys can see when he does let go the difference in his ears and his neck and his back. Um, but it's like I say, it's all about pressure and release. That little feel, the second they give you something, you just release. So they learn that that's a nice place. And it's early days for him. Now we're further down the line, he's got the hang of that. And you can see in this second clip here, I'm wanting him to just relax. The head and neck's tight, he's resting a hind leg, not because he's relaxed and falling asleep, because he's a bit tense. So I'm just trying to encourage him. And this just takes time. He's moved away from the pressure, he's squared up, he's relaxed a little bit. Now, obviously, I've spent time with him desensitising him with the stick, so he now understands that as the stick goes on, he waits for a cue. So here I'm going to put the stick where my leg would be, a little tap-tap, as soon as he moves, I release. So I'm thinking about riding my horse on the ground, so I'm teaching him to go from the leg, which is the stick, up into the contact, which is my light feel of the rope or the bridle. So here you can see it's a light array through the contact. I'm encouraging with the stick to step back and eventually that will just be a light rein aid. But it's really important he moves before I do. What we don't want to be doing is pulling him along because he's then not learning to go forward into the contact. So here I'm just going to give him a little reward and he quite likes to scratch on the wither with the stick. So I'm now just going to encourage him again to just relax. Whoops, bird out of the water trough. Um, but what's nice about this, and I've left this video in because you can see he's had a little jump, but actually comes back down quite quick. A few days ago, that would have taken a lot longer. I've just stayed really grounded, and here I'm just going to sit it out, wait till he relaxes, gets back in the room, and then I'll re-ask. But again, you can just see that head and neck's quite tense and tight. So I'm going to give him a little scratch, put him back in neutral. He's moved, so I'm just going to stay there till he just breathes. And then I'll ask him to walk on again. A little tap, tap. He moves hopefully before I do and I remove the pressure. So I've kept the walk quite slow because I haven't got a light stop yet. Um, and again, you can see it's just a bit more in the hand than I would like. So there's no self-carriage. There's no kind of relaxation into that stop. And actually over the few, over the few weeks that I am now, that's really starting to come. But again here just need him to let go a little bit he's dropping his back his back end is out it's not under him so it's just work in progress and again you can see the back up I've put this in because I think this is horrid but you can see how tight and tense he is and you know a lot of us struggle with rain back um, and on the when you're in the middle of a test on board you know they come tight and back at you you're going to get a bad mark so teaching them on the ground that actually back up relaxing softening it's going to give you a better lift through the joints and it's going to give you a better diagonal push. So here, I'm just going to relax again. It's really important we give our horses processing time. Just give them a chance to think about what's happened. Put them back in neutral, regroup and then re-ask. So here I've backed him up quite quick because he's actually ignored me. I'd put the um, stick on his side as I would normally and then I was just about to ask him to go but he went before I'd asked. So I backed him up, said, no, that's not acceptable. So backing up is um, a good tool. Um, tool number two for me, like here now, he's moving away from the stick as if the stick's going to bite him. So I'm going to keep the pressure on. As soon as he stops and he relaxes, then I will remove the pressure. But he's got to stop. He's got to breathe, be grounded. It's not quite there yet. Now he is. Now I'll take the stick away. And I'm just going to repeat the process. As I've gone to put the stick near, he's moved away again. Now, I don't want this because I don't want to be moving up to him and he moves away. Um, I want to be able to put my stick on his body and give him different A's at different times. And he's got to wait for that cue. 
So again here, I'm just stroking him. It's okay. Everything's fine. The stick is there. He stood for a second or two. I've taken the pressure away. Now, obviously, it's working progress. So each day you'll come out with a different tool. Some days they will be better than others. Here I'm going to teach him to park. So park is really important for me. Why? Well, it's nice that if you want to do your girth up, go around, do your stirrups up, you drop something, you want to pick it up, you don't want the horse on top of you and following you. So he's got to learn to park. So this is, um, I've done quite a few days of this so far. So you'd start off with putting your horse in neutral, wait until it relaxes and breathes, and then stepping half a step back. And obviously I'm further down the field now, and I can step a few more steps and I can walk around him. So what's important here is that he learns that actually when he's in park, he just relaxes and stays. And you can see here, he's got the hang of that, it's getting. But it's just a case of step by step and increasing the steps that you take back as the horse is more comfortable with the understanding of what you've asked. But he's got this, he's a good boy. Quite pleased with that. Now I'm going to show you a rain back. I'm going to show you a bad rain back. So what's important about rain back and the fact that you want it to be soft, um, you want your horse to be straight, just take note of his stuffing. Is he breathing? Is he relaxed? Is he even in his stuffing? Is he putting more weight into one shoulder? Is he you know, cocking his head, twisting his head? Yes, he is. So then your rain back's not going to be straight. So I've put this in because a lot of people ask me about this. And again, it's breaking it down into bite-sized chunks. If your horse is softening and relaxing and it's evenly stuffed, it's more likely to take a even step back and a diagonal pair. But again, you build on it. You might do one or two steps and build on that foundations. So if the horse is stepping back at an angle, generally you need to tap up the leg that's taken a shorter stride. But again, build it up slowly. So here Duke is being a little unsure. Um, I've asked him to walk on. I'm on the other side of him. He's not so good with his right eye. That's taken more time. It has improved. But to start with, I was very aware of he was much happier with me in his left eye than his right but as I've asked him to walk on, he's moved to the side rather than walk on. Because Duke has done that little bit more than you guys have seen, he understands quarter turns and shoulder turns. And he understands that actually if he doesn't walk on straight now, I will put him back to where I started. So here you can see that I just quietly come round, I ask for a quarter turn and I put him back where I started. So what's a good tip for you guys here is walking backwards is a big deal. It's not as easy as it looks. Focus on something ahead. Now, we all get drawn to looking at our horses and we almost end up kind of going where they put us. So looking at something in the arena, a bit of electric fencing, a building, a tree, is quite useful to just see where you end up. Um, but trying to ride that straight line, like I say, it takes a bit of practice. But here you can see I've just taken my time. I'm lowering his head again. I'm just waiting for him to let me back in. So once he starts to relax... Just take it that little bit of time, I will ask the question again. And, you know, this just takes time. They need time to process. They need time to kind of breathe and let you back in. Um, so you can see here, I've asked him to walk on again. There was a little bit of resistance, but I'm going to take it, um, compromise. But actually, it's caused me my next issue because he didn't really walk on properly. He is tight and tense. So I'm actually going to go back to the basics and I'm going to ask again. So... As I've gone to get that a little bit closer to ask him to walk on, he's backing away from me, so he's evading. So I'm going to disengage him. So it's not um, that I'm telling him off. I'm just trying to encourage him that actually standing still was much nicer than having to move. Now, I may disengage him from the left. I may dis disengage him from the right. Um, I will do the amount of turns that I feel I need to. I just assess it at the time. But you can see here that... He's kind of gone, mm, OK, maybe I'll stand still, but he's not relaxed. You can see his ears. don't know how well you can see his face, but he's already thinking about backing up. Now, obviously, I know this horse a little bit more now, so I know what's coming. You can see through his muscles and his body language what's going to happen. But I've given him a chance. It hasn't worked. So I'm going to disengage him again. So normally but with Duke so far, I've not had to do it more than three times. Each time seems to be getting better. And I think here I only have to do it twice. And then he kind of goes, oh, do you know what? I'd rather stand still. There's a bit of a head shake there just as a release. But actually, good boy. It's a good pony. Nice scratch there. Moving on to Prince. Um, you'll notice that Duke's tied up. Um, I've been working both the ponies in the field. I haven't brought them onto the yard. 
Uh, it's nice to give both the old boys and the young ponies a chance to settle and make sure that everybody is fit and healthy before we introduce anyone. Um, also, it's nice for these two to have an environment where they feel comfortable, just the two of them. They did come together and have been together for a little while. But also for me to get some tools, some solid foundations, so that when I take them into a new environment that's going to be more exciting, I've got a little bit on my side. And I'm not trying to encourage them in new things um, as well as a new environment. So Prince is only just three. So he's learning the very basics again of ground work. Um, and you can see here he uses his head and neck. He's very friendly. In fact, he's too friendly. He's got to learn a little bit about personal space, bless him. Um, so I'm just encouraging him to lower. He's actually pretty good at that. He's quite confident with this. And again, a little reward with a stick. But the same principle. So back up, probably more back up with him just to try and teach him to stay out of my space. Um, little rock with the head collar there. Nope, you are not to lean against me. Um, but again, pressure and release. And he's a real sweetie, you know, he's a quick learner. He wants to please. Again, here another little reassurance. And you can notice here as I ask him to walk on, he walks on, it's kind of okay, and then he uses his head and neck. So what I'm going to do is give him a little wiggle and back him up again. So basically I call it delete. Not acceptable. Back you go. Give him a second to think about it. Let him process. And then regroup. Stay grounded. Think of your breathing. When he's in the right place, we'll start again. Good pony. And you can see here, a little reward. And then the same again. So it's just repetition. I'm only do it two or three times. If he's done it nicely, I'll leave it there. And he may only do five minutes a day. If he's done it sweetly, good boy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this sequence of videos. It's been really nice to share. So any questions, um, want any advice, please ask. I would ask again, please like and share and subscribe to my channel for more. Look forward to seeing you soon.